I wanted to try to design a phono preamp, RIAA type preamp, using a 6U10. In the past, I've used 6U10s for different projects. This one was a guitar amplifier I designed a few years back. Uh, 6U10 seemed to be uh, quite available. I'm going to try to make a phono amp with it. I looked online for some examples of three tube RIAA preamplifiers and I found a few. I even found one that I was interested in that also used a 6U10 tube. But what I found to be interesting is a tube preamp that I found on Turner Audio and he has several designs here of three triode phono amplifiers for RIAA equalization. The one that interested me was the active design here. It shows a active feedback network and I thought maybe if I use this as a, a template for a three tube phono amplifier it might be good to try to prototype one and see how well it would function. So I'm going to draw something up similar and and see what I come up with. Looking at the 6U10 has three sections which I'd like to use to cover one channel of the phono preamp. The specs section 2 specifications are almost equal to the 12AX7 the 12AX7 has a transductance of at 1600 and a plate resistance of 62500. If you look at the 6U10 section 2, it's 61000 for the plate resistance and 1600 for transconductance and that's at 200 volts. So section 2 I could use as the the cartridge input to the phono preamp. It'd be equivalent to having a 12AX7 at the input of the phono amp. Now if we look at the other two sections of the 6U10 are close to a 12AU7 which is a medium mu triode for audio amplifiers and so on. If you look at the characteristics here on the 12AU7, plate resistance 7700, transconductance 2200. And if we look at sections 1 and 2 of the 6U10, the plate resistance is 7700, transconductance 2300 at 200 volts. So of the 6U10, section 2, which would be the center section, is equivalent to the 12AX7, and sections 1 and 3 are equivalent to the 12AU7. So, we're going to come up with a design using the 6U10 for the phono preamp. I have a preliminary design of the RIAA equalized phono preamp using the 6U10. This is just one channel. So I haven't come up with all the values here yet for the feedback network. But I mainly wanted to get the amplification stages in here. So we start out with section 2 of the 6U10 which is equivalent to the 12AX7. Then the second stage which is equivalent to the 12AU7 and also this section is equivalent to the 12AU7 triode. This section is also equivalent to the 12AU7. Now here I added an op amp. The op amp is just there for impedance matching. There is a little bit of gain here. I put a gain of 1.66 at the op amp. This is a LF356 FET input op amp. It does no signal conditioning. It's just there as a buffer and a little bit of linear gain. 
that will keep this section here from being loaded from any change out here. In other words, with the original design, here would be where you would connect to go to your uh, amplifier or preamp or whatever. This needs to be buffered, otherwise the impedance, depending on what kind of amplifier you connect this to at line level, this impedance here, which is fixed now at 39K, it could be all over the place. Some of them have input impedances of 10K, some 50K, and it would change this network. So we need a buffer here. I could have used another tube for it, but the op amp gives me a better stable output impedance. So this can drive most any amplifier. So this will have a fixed impedance of 39K because this is about a 10 meg input impedance here. It's quite high anyway, so, and there's just a small bit of gain here. This network I still have to work on, but I wanted to get it far enough where I could lay out a printed circuit board. So this is a one tube preamp using the 6U10 Compactron. I do have the power supply kind of figured out here. The 12 volts from the switching supply will come in to this header along with, uh, or this is actually a screw uh, terminal, and also 300 volts will come in here. The 12 volts will drive the left and the right 6U10s in series. The 12 volts is filtered through this 10 ohms to drop any little bit of ripple that might be on here. These two 5.1 caves give a reference for the op amp at half V. So we've got a 6 volt reference and a 12 volt rail for the op amp. These are the plate filtering and voltage divider circuit. And that is up here. So this stage, this output stage, gets the full 300 volts. And then the divider divides it down some for VDR and V preamp. So plus V driver plus V preamp. So, I think I've got it good enough to start laying out a board. I came up with a printed circuit board layout for the RIAA stereo preamp using the 6U10. As before, on the switching supply, green is top layer, red is bottom layer. I designed kind of a different library part here for the resistors. This is a combination leaded surface mount footprint here. And the reason being, some of the leaded resistors are actually getting harder to find that are low noise. If I use this design in the future and can't get a leaded resistor, I can put a 1206 here. This is a 1206 footprint that's embedded underneath the uh, standard quarter watt 1% leaded part. And the same here for capacitors. Some of the leaded capacitors are getting either hard to find or very expensive. But anyway, for this design, when it's time to do the parts list, I'm hoping I can come up with all the leaded parts to keep it more traditional for a uh, vacuum tube preamplifier. Just for fun, I put an LED here underneath the tube that'll put a little blue light underneath just for fun. Anyway, this is the layout. Two Compactron tubes and also the op amps for the output buffer. We have all the inputs and outputs and power terminals here on the back of the board. So all the wires will come in on the back to these screw terminals. So hopefully there won't be any mods to make to the board once uh, I get it built, I'm going to have to go ahead and send this out and get probably get five of them made and we'll build them up and then have to tweak in some of the components for the RIAA curve to get that looking best we can. And then we'll do a plot to a standard curve and, and see how we fit in. So now it's, uh, it's time to order boards. Okay, the boards came in from the manufacturer and now I'm going to quickly get them built here. Get some testing done. We'll first do preliminary testing. I'll make sure signal flows through and the power supply up and runs okay. And after that, we'll work on that RIAA curve and make sure that it works properly. So now it's time for the testing phase. 
okay I've got the values for the RIAA filter filled in and the gain values for the op amp we're ready to test We've got the 300 volt power supply connected and ready to go 12 volts applied to the board for the filaments I'm going to apply about 1.2 millivolts at a thousand Hertz to the input and the output is sitting right at a minus 10 which is where I wanted it and it looks like a pretty decent waveform for the uh, preliminary tests we're doing here this is a chart of the frequency and gain slash attenuation of the RIAA curve at a thousand Hertz here we're relative to 0 dB that's the basic reference so I plotted the frequency response and these are the numbers that I came up with and they're pretty close so putting them on this published graph here the green line is the 6U10 preamp and it tracks pretty close to the published graph which is the red line here so green is the tube preamp and it tracks quite well the little dip here between 10 and 20 Hertz I'm not too worried about that if anything that would help out uh, turntable rumble maybe a little bit so actually this probably is a good thing so it looked like it's a go time for the hardware portion of the project I'm building two units I had this acrylic lid made so the circuit would be visible this is a solid steel box got to use solid steel because of noise you don't want to use aluminum because aluminum will not block magnetic field noise from transformers nearby and so on so this is a, a heavy steel chassis I'm using very low capacitance shielded cable for the inputs because the input impedance is quite high around 47 K or thereabouts so you want really good low capacitance cable going to it I'm using the uh, 300 volt switching power supply I have another video on the design of that so right now I'm going to connect up all of the wiring coming from below and place the tubes in as I said I'm building two units so I'll probably sell one on eBay or something and then keep the other one once I have it all put together we'll try some testing so we'll shine up the Lexon a little bit here get it ready to wire in now I have it wired into the computer and I'm going to play a couple of old albums here on this PL 51 turntable I purchased back in the in the 70s along with this Pickering cartridge the XV15 I just purchased a new stylus for it so hopefully it'll do a good job too I'm going to import the audio into the computer with this uh, Focusrite Scarlett and I use an old program called CoolEdit for capturing because it's nice and simple not a lot of bells and whistles 